Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this weekly felt, we're going to be kicking off the new year by talking about some of the awesome new things that have both arrived in Svelte Kit lately, as well as Svelte. And we're going to be talking about this latest blog post on the Svelte blog, which is Accelerating Svelte's Development by Ben McCann. Now, Ben uh, is a core contributor to uh, Svelte Kit here, and he wrote a really great post about essentially the current status of Svelte, what's going on, um, you know, where Svelte's been at, but also where the community's been at. Uh, how It talks about how um, Svelte is voted as the most loved framework, and that was in the Stack Overflow survey, the most satisfied uh, developers from the state of JS 2020. And actually the state of JS 2021 is going on right now, so hit that up and vote for Svelte, you know I did. Um, you can see that High profile companies using Svelte like the New York Times, Apple, Spotify, Square, Rakuten, uh, Bloomberg, Reuters, Ikea, Brave, and Level Up Tutorials. We'll add that one too. But um, it's important to note here that when people say, oh, I, you know, I would love to learn Svelte, but um, where's the job market for it? Everyone uses React. I think this very clearly proves that that's not true. Everybody doesn't just use React. People use whatever they want, and a lot of big companies are using Svelte as well as Svelkit. Um, so check it out. Uh, this is really neat. It talks about how they're moving towards a stable version 1.0. Also, I apologize on the glasses here. It's got me looking like, uh, I think, Gendo from <laughs> Evangelion or something. Um, check it out. Okay, so it says, Scaling the team. Svelte, uh, Svelte's creator, Rich Harris, uh, you know, the man, Rich, has joined Vercel to work on Svelte full-time, which, um, if you're just hearing that, this has been big news for a little bit now, but this is just incredible news because gotta love working on Svelte full time, but also Vercel has just been hammering the web with like nonstop goodness for a long time now. So it's great news. But also it talks about Svelte has um, added numerous core maintainers over the course of the pandemic. And Ben McCann, who wrote this blog post, um, Bluey, uh, I'm gonna try to do best with these names here. Uh, Dominin Kid, <laughs> Dum, Dum Dee Dum. Uh, e. Ren Corona, Jeff Rich, uh, Jeff Rich, sorry, that was like the easiest one and I goofed it up, sorry, Jeff. Um, Gregor Flizzer, Half Nelson, Ignatius MB, Jason Liu123, Kaiser Mann, Red Hatter, Rick So. Now, I'm sorry if any of you, if any of you are watching this and I butchered your username, please give me a pronunciation guide. I'd love to make sure I say it correctly next time. It also talks about how Svelte has been collecting donations on Open Collective. Level Up Tutorials is a monthly donator to Svelte. Uh, we believe strongly in supporting the projects that we use. So if you are a company and you're using Svelte or Svelte Kit, donate. Uh, give them your money because it helps the project improve. And I strongly believe that's the only way we're going to continue to advance these projects. Um, partnerships. You can see that there's partnerships with Vercel, uh, Cloudflare Pages, um, a lot of neat stuff, uh, Penguin. And Lukeed, um, Penguin has been a big contributor to Svelte for a while now. Um, they wrote the Cloudflare Pages Adapter, Begin, as in begin.com, another great place to host, uh, created a Svelte Kit adapter for Architect, which is their whole serverless platform, really cool platform, check it out. Um, again, I have no connections with these companies, but they're all. Okay, uh, it also says they're working closely with the Vita team to iron out SSR issues which is great because Vita as a platform has been awesome too. Also talking about the growing community, the Svelte Society YouTube channel. I gave a talk on there most recently about switching from React to Svelte. Uh, the Svelte subreddit, you'll see me over there as well. I'm posting all the time. The Svelte radio podcast, I've made a couple appearances on there, but that show is great. Give it a subscribe, give it a like, download all the episodes. Svelte Sirens uh, is just an awesome project for a women and non-binary community. Um, it's, it's very, very cool. Brittany, I, I know Brittany um, from the Svelte Sirens has been a member of the Level Up Tutorials Discord for a long time. She's um, extremely wonderful. So give them a check out, like all their stuff. It also talks about the Svelte Ambassadors program, which um, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna butcher some names again. Uh, Babich, Jacob, Bradley Fractal, Gr uh, Brittany Postma, who is the same Brittany I just mentioned, uh, D3 Sandoval, uh, Jeff Rich, Kev, uh, Peru, Rain Life, R. Munn, Estelinski, Swix, Theo, all of these awesome people have been working really hard to promote sw uh, Svelte, teach Svelte, and share Svelte in various different ways. You know we have over here. 
It also talks about some various things to watch, including progressing towards this 1.0 release. In the past week, we've added major features that improved client-only rendering. Yes, um, this is actually a neat pull request. Routing hooks, which is also a neat pull request. So let me, let me dive into some of these. The improved client-only rendering, what this allows you to do here is it allows users to pass a second argument to resolve inside the handle hook. This contains an argument that tells uh, whether or not a page should be loaded on the server. Now, this one did generate some discussion here. Let me find this post. And this one right here by Dumb D Dumb, uh, Simon H. So Simon, what's up? Uh, did a really great job of explaining why this is important. And this is something that I love. So this is a Svelte Kit specific improvement. Think about it like this. In the past, we say export let SSR false. And that's to say, hey, don't SSR render this page. But I myself have encountered some problems with this, like many people have. Let's Here's a good example. You try to load up a client-side only library. I tried to do this with a video player, right? The video player has methods on the window, all sorts of things that are going to fail in any sort of server rendered context, right? You can't have a video player on the server. Granted, you can have HTML, but once you get into the um, the M8, M38U, the, the video streaming stuff, you need to start bringing in some JavaScript that interacts with the DOM, and it's just not going to work in any context outside of the, the, the client. So what I would have to do, actually, uh, our video player was web components based. Specifically, web components aren't going to do a whole lot on the server anyway. So that's why we had some of these issues too. And we had to do an on mount and then on mount, then do a dynamic import to import the library, then set the module. And then and let me tell you, that was a giant pain in the butt. Uh, it, did, it didn't encounter a number of issues with that. So they've now made it so that you specify SSR in a different spot. And this makes it so you can specify your SSR in a handle. So now he says that the handle hook might look more cumbersome because it's all of this code versus, uh, sorry, not this, versus this export let SSR. You now have to create a handle function. You have to say await path resolve if the path is not equal to whatever you want this to be or whatever. You're telling SSR to say, all right, we're going to server side render any path that is not start with admin. In fact, this is actually how ours does it too. But we would say, um, we would say this, but also, um, the video player too, as well, right? And anything that's not the video player page, don't SSR or so basically what you're doing is intercepting the request. You're checking to see if it matches a certain pattern. If it does, then say SSR is true. Otherwise SSR equals false. And this allows you to then just import lib from lib. If you're doing a video player or doing client side only code or doing those types of things that may hit an issue with having client side code, whether that's referencing the browser or the DOM in some sort of way that's invalid on the server. So we no longer are going to have to do this whole on mount dance and load this uh, as a dynamic import. This is a big one for me, and I'm actually really happy to have this. Um, despite the fact that this is more work on your end, it's slightly more work. And not only when you um, account for all this stuff, it's honestly way less confusing in my mind. And if you want to do a whole client side app now, you just do SSR equals false for the whole app, now your app's client side or SPOD. Um, okay, so check it out. We also have new routing hooks, which are great. I've checked these out already. I've been following this PR because I kind of wanted some of these before Navigate and after Navigate are now Svelte hooks that you can use, uh, just like on mount, um, on destroy. Those are pretty, uh, pretty um, self um, descriptive, right? We, we have um, before Navigate, these things kind of explain what they are. So. Uh, just a quick example before navigate is a hook that runs before you navigate on a page, you click a link, the before hook fires, the page changes after navigate and then fires. This would be nice for a handful of reasons. Um, you can cancel requests and intercept them and do nice and neat things. You can also, maybe that's like a place to do a loading spinner. We use something different for a loading spinner, but it gives you more control. More control is good. Um, there's also ability to pass data from child components to layouts. Now I haven't had the need for this, but it seems nice to be able to do. Um, I don't think there's any code examples directly in here, but think about it just like this, um, adding returned stuff from pages to the page store. This allows us that if we want to pass in, um, data into stuff and it makes the data available in the layout, if that data is collected from the page route, um, again, nothing that I'm 
nothing that I'm using myself, but it's again, nice to have. Now, in addition, there's been a lot of neat updates to Svelte itself um, and some more updates to Svelte Kit, which I'm going to talk about too, but it, it, that's in a different blog post. The updates to Svelte recently were constants and markup. This one is awesome. I'm so excited to have this. There's a hundred times where I'd want to use this. Let's say you have an each loop. You're going over this each loop. Occasionally, you need to do things with the data from each item in that loop. And the solution in the past for this has just been create a new component, create a child component, and do that work in the child component. Now, we won't have to because what you can do is, let's see the example here. Um, where's the good example? Because these are all explaining the problem, explaining the problem, explaining the problem is right here. Now we're getting this new const variable. So we can say at const the variable name, and this is inside of an each loop, area is equal to box width times box height. This is dynamically calculating the area for each box in the loop, meaning that we don't have to create a child component anymore just to access or modify properties inside of a loop. I love this. I'm going to use this all the time. This is very exciting to me. Um, another one that I'm very excited about, let's pop in here, is the style directives. This is, I mean, they dropped these on the same day, and I was very, very pumped about both of these. Uh, this allows us to do style colon the CSS property is equal to and then the CSS value. Now, why is this interesting at all? Why is this cool? It's cool specifically because it's going to make dynamic CSS so much easier. In the past, you're often seeing things like this, right? You have a string, you're passing in um, some JavaScript expressions, and it gets really nasty. You're doing a lot of JavaScript inside of a string. I mean, again, that's clumsy. Where now we can do it in a little bit more of a JavaScripty way, style position, uh, style top, and then it just a straight up JavaScript expression in here. This is going to make dynamic CSS a lot cleaner. It's going to make it a lot easier to read. And honestly, I'm looking forward to this quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to have to update my version of Svelte. Now let's check out this other blog post from January, which is from Daniel Sandoval. And this one was a great blog post too, if you haven't seen this. In fact, this one directly impacts leveluptutorials.com because after making these updates to our site, it got a ton faster, like seriously. So um, some small things, if you're using adapter static, you now get pre-compress. Um, I'm not using adapter static, but it allows you to do um, compression of assets easier, but it allows for uh, broadly compression of assets um, easier to do out of the box. Hey, all for that, right? Compression is great. Concurrency mode in Svelkit will now pre-render pages in parallel. It's enabled by default. Yes, uh, CSS is now automatically included before JS to improve page performance. Yes, a, look, I mean, anything that says we're going to improve your page performance for free, give me that all day. A new config option that adds ability to disable service worker registration to your own custom registration. I don't, I don't do too much with server service worker, so not big for me, but cool. Uh, SSR route splitting. This is the big one for me. Uh, SSR route sp splitting, breaking monolithic builds into smaller pieces to improve smart up, startup and routing performance. So for us, we have a fairly large application. The whole thing is server side rendered. And when you were to navigate, we were getting some pretty hefty load times on some of our pages, specifically because our server side build was big, right? Now we get route splitting for server side rendering, meaning that uh, your giant application, your giant monolithic build is now going to be split into smaller builds. Um, this is also really good for anyone who's deploying on serverless applications because lambdas have a size limit of 50 megabytes. Cloud for layer workers have a size limit of one megabyte. Um, many apps won't reach these limits, but many will. Yes. So we need to be able to split the server side app, the, the node application that we generate for server side applications into smaller chunks. Startup will be faster. We've seen it. Uh, routing should be faster. We have seen it. Definitely. And this was a great PR and I was super happy to have this one. Um, next, or, this is actually a breaking change. So if you update your applications, you need to be cognizant of this. I think we even have a outstanding bug right now I need to fix for this. Request origin path query is now request.url. And um, basically what we, we had some decently large change Basically, we had some decently large changes for, let me pull this up. We had some decently large changes to the loader function parameters. It, in the past, it was under page. 
Now we have URL and params as their own options inside of the request options. If you're a TypeScript user, um, it'll be really nice for you to update your applications. Granted, if your loading functions are being typed, then you should be just follow the TypeScript errors and fix these problems. Otherwise, you'll want to consult this PR to make sure that you don't hit any bugs because you will if you were using any sort of params in your routes. There's also updates to Vite 2.7 reporting significant performance improvements. We've seen it. Huge improvements. Our, our, uh, with Between these improvements and some caching that we did, our slowest route on the site went from two seconds on my machine to 0.2 seconds. It went from two seconds to 200 milliseconds. That's wild. And I didn't do it. I mean, I added some caching, but the caching was a small, small part of it. A lot of this was just improvements that we got from the code splitting, from a VIT being this much better, and the caching, and some minor changes I made. Either way, oh, this latest build of Svelte has been awesome. Svelte kit. Also, the Svelte kit server will now automatically restart when config files are changed. Small improvement, but a welcome one. Um, a lot of other little things. View bug fixes. Svelte language tools is introduced. Then catch shorthands. Um, cool. I, I, I haven't used that. I need to check that out. Svelte REPL got some nice upgrades. Yes, I, I love the Svelte REPL. I use it all the time for neat things. Um, there's also some community showcase stuff that's really good. And I look forward to having, um, actually, hey, the Syntax Podcast, how to do things in Svelte. I didn't know we were on here, but that's, we're on here. Um, I look forward to making this list sometime soon when jQuery gets finished. And for those of you wondering about the status of jQuery, like what's up with jQuery? Where is it at? Well, we're using it in production right now. And it's pretty sweet. The reason why I haven't made it available just yet is because, um, actually, let me find a page. The reason I haven't released it to production, I was making some changes to the API, even like little things where um, our generated routes are now .gq. So like um, import user from user account, user queries .gq. It's a small change, but like if I would have released it as G generated, which it was, which is too long and unnecessary and weird to say, um, and changed it afterwards, everyone would have been mad. So uh, I will be showing off quite a bit more about jQuery very soon. I, I really like using it myself. So um, soon you'll be able to use it as well. Check it out. Cool. So this is it. This is the latest Svelte update. This was a doozy. This is a big one. They probably won't all be this big. I covered January, uh, January 1st. To, I mean, well, these are only two blog posts and they're like 20 days apart, 10 days, 13 days apart. Major stuff dropping here. So uh, Svelte is on a roll, and uh, it's an exciting time to be a Svelte developer. What can I say? If you're interested in learning Svelte, Svelte Kit, all that and more, head on over to leveluptutorials.com, leveluptutorials.com. Um, this is a new theme I added. It's pink and teal. It's fun. We have a lot of fun things like that. This whole site is built in Svelte Kit. It's built in Svelte. So if you want to learn Svelte and Svelte Kit from somebody who's been in the trenches with it, uh, hit up leveluptutorials.com, sign up for the year and save 25%. Our rates are going to be going up soon, so uh, get in now, and you will be grandfathered into that price until you cancel. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week for the next edition of Weekly Svelte. We're going to be highlighting some more community projects. So if there's any interesting or neat Svelte projects that you're using, that you're loving, that you're having a great time with, post them in the comments below. I will check them out if I haven't already, and I will love to see what you're working on. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.